Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Eastwood Garage. Uh, I'm Joe, here with Bob, Bob Green, real time. We are here today to show you guys, uh, we're gonna show you guys MIG welding basics. Bob's gonna teach me how to weld. Um, he's gonna take me, show me how to set up the welder all the way to some safety and lay my first bead. And as always, we like to keep these as interactive as possible. We have Scott over here taking care of social for us. So if you guys have any questions during the show, relay them to him. He'll either answer, answer them if he can, or he'll shoot them over to us, and we'll try our best to answer them. I certainly will, so make sure you get them on, and it's kind of nice seeing Joe on the other side of the camera today, and seeing Bob first time. We're gonna make sure you guys know how to weld. Bob is a great teacher, so tune in and see what you can learn. Yeah, absolutely. People are probably used to seeing my camera work and my editing exploits, but here I am in front of the camera. So Bob, take it away. Where do I begin? All right, so what we're doing today is we're, um, somebody coming in off the street wanted doing a welding. You buy a welder, you have no idea what to do with it, how to set it up or anything like that, how to load wire. I'm going to take you through the safety, how to load the wire, and how to lay your first bead. Excellent. All right, so very first thing I teach is safety. Uh, actually, a good welding helmet is good to have. We have this one here that uh, Joe's going to be using. This is the kind that we use in our classroom. This is uh, our extra large view, and when we first start out, well, I tell everybody to put it on setting 11. 11 is like the middle of the road, and if that is too bright while you're welding, you can always turn it down, which will be turning it up in numbers. That makes it darker for you. Turning it to the lower number makes it brighter. Okay. This has a grinder feature, so do not click it on the grind, because it will not darken. All right, how to put the helmet on. The back of the helmet, you have this little wheel. Press it down. You open it up, put it on your head, push it down, tighten it up. Now, it's only plastic, okay. so don't tighten it up too much because right. you, you will snap it. Um, the, this helmet has a lot of good features, which I won't get into today. It's just a great helmet, and it's auto-darkening. So we'll set you on number 11 for the very first time. Excellent. All right. Uh, welding gloves, safety glasses. I see you have your safety glasses on. I do. I wear them underneath the welding as well. Gloves, that's my helmet, and, of course, welding jacket. Um, jeans, leather shoes, work boots, things like that. So that covers that part of the safety. Uh, other part of the safety is your gas bottle. Okay. The gas bottle is very, very important and also kind of dangerous. Uh, we make sure that it is chained up at all times. If you're transporting them, they must have the top on. Okay. So if the, if the top is... Chain right here. Okay, it's chained okay, up. Okay, chain, it keeps it from tipping over. Um, one of the guys in the class, when I told him about this, could be tipped over and knock the valve off. This could become a rocket. And they just did a thing on Mythbusters where this actually goes through a cinder block wall. Wow, so you don't want to be in the way of that. It is dangerous. It, if it hits you, it could kill you. Okay. So top on the, at all times. When you're not, uh, make sure it's transported or whatever with the chain on. All right. The valve, when you turn the valve on, you open it slowly and make sure that the regulator is not for facing anybody. Okay. So you open her up nice and slow and it's all the way up or all the way down. So the regulator, I actually had a guy come in the store and he turned his regulator on too fast and it popped it apart. Oh wow, it just blew it apart then. Yep. It? And I asked him if I could have that and he allowed me to keep that so I can show my students in the class. Wow. Yeah, so you, you don't want that flying across exactly. the room hitting you in the, uh, correct. in the eyes or anything like that. Huh? That is correct. That part there, if that would have hit you, it could, you know, you could lose an eye. <laughs> All right, so um, the regulator, if you turn it on nice and slow, the diaphragm is going to last a lot longer. It's going to be safe. And, again, make sure you don't face it towards anybody when you turn it on. Okay. While we're talking about regulators, this is not a safety part, but I have a lot of questions in the store where I'm using too much gas. So I have a little blue line drawn on here. I don't know. Randy, can you get that? or? There's a blue line drawn on there about where I set the gas. And that's usually about 12 to 15 CFH, that's cubic feet per hour. Okay. Um, because if you leave it up to the black line, 15, you're going to use twice as much gas and you don't really need that much shielding gas. Okay, so I can see how people can read the wrong line. Right. And, so and accidentally set to the, the wrong little, pressure. A little blue line right there. Okay, so definitely you make note of the units that you're measuring. Correct. Which line? Correct. Okay. 
All right, as far as safety again, we make sure that we have fire extinguishers. We have two in this, this room. We have two fire extinguishers, which were good. Excellent. Um, and make sure that you have, you're not welding in, in any kind of water or anything like that if you're welding outside. Mm -hmm. um, if you are welding outside, sometimes you may want to turn the gas up a little bit, give you a little more CFH, um, just because of the breeze that's outside, or put up a piece of cardboard or plywood. Okay, because I get, yeah, like a breeze could blow right. away the shooting right. gas and yep. defeat the purpose, right? All right, and um, safety. One of the uh, biggest uh, problems with welding as far as accidents go is tripping over objects in the in the store or in the where your shop is okay. if you have a uh, frame or something you have your helmet on you lose your peripheral vision and you're walking around you got your welding torch in your hand next thing you know you're falling shoulder injury yeah things like that so just be aware of the surroundings as you're welding and you're going to have a good fun time because welding is a blast i love it and okay. uh, so, so, so so can we lay our first bead not yet not yet, not yet. You're, right. you're getting a little anxious there sir <laughs> Um, if you do have any questions, just ask. Okay. All right, we're going to go over the welder right now. So, this is our welder. It has infinite adjustability. Your heat range is all the way from A up to J. Okay. You can see that. And your wire speed is infinitely adjustable as well. You can really fine tune this machine in. Um, we're going to load some wire. If anybody has ever welded or opened up MIG wire for the first time in their life, you'll be surprised what can happen. I, I go over this with the customers in the store. When you undo your wire for the very first time, be aware that this is like a coiled spring. So when you unload it, don't do this. Oh. Because that could happen. You're going to lose half your spool right there. Exactly. Okay. All right, so the very first time I did mine, it just unwound like that and there's no way you can wind it on back so it's going to make it smooth to unwind. So you pretty much just take this roll, clip off what you can and save what else ever you can. So okay. we'll put that under there for now. So what I have here, if you can get inside here for a second. When you load the wire, when these machines come new, there's a coating over these, the roller, the drive roller, which is metal and the counter roller which okay. is your tensioner roller that's also metal i take a little bit of our low voc pre on a rag and i clean the oil that's on there off and every roll of wire that i put on i do clean those rollers too because they'll get dirty in time from the coating that's on the wire okay so you just keep it kind of you clean, keep, keep lube it clean. And running smoothly. well just clean not lube but just clean okay because you want a good um Drive roller, clean, that way your, your driver, every time you do spot welds, when you're doing sheet metal, you're on and off a lot. Okay. All right? All right, so any questions on that and why would I do that? No, that seems to make sense. Okay, cool. All right, so um, one of the biggest things, too, is wire feed. This, our machines come with this black washer on the back, which helps the roll unwind. Okay. Without that, your metal washer in there wants to cause more resistance to this wire unrolling. Okay. Then you'll have to make the tensioner tighter and then it's just a, a problematic system. So in order to keep everything functioning the way it's supposed to, you keep that on, you make sure you use your key weight bushing, and I always put the smooth side towards the uh, roll. Okay. Now, if you want to hand me the MIG pliers there, please, I'll cut sure this thing. part off. So with that bushing in the washer, you're trying to keep all the smooth surfaces on each other so, exactly. so that it uh, spins exactly. as freely yep. as possible. Now, as you see, I'm holding the wire. <laughs> if not, that what we did with the other one is going to happen. Okay. So you take this, smooth it out a little bit, straighten it out nice and straight as the best you can because you have to feed it in through where the drive roller goes. Okay. Now, since my eyes are bad, I have to go like this. And... I have big fingers, so I, there's not enough room for my fingers to fit in there. All right, so I put a little bit, like maybe six to ten inches of wire inside the torch. Okay. I bring the tensioner. I, I also saw that uh, 
I guess the two grooves that are on the roller, you're putting in the groove kind of closest to the machine, to the core of the machine. Correct. And this groove is set up for our 30 to 35 or our 25 to 23 wire. And it says on the outside what it is. So we have the groove already set up for the larger wire. Simple enough. Yep. So you put that down. I bring the tensioner up like that. Now, most of our machines are set from the factory, and here's how I tell the students to check the tension of this to make sure you're okay. Give a tug. You see I'm pulling the whole machine, Yeah. and it's not sliding out. If that were to slide out, then you tighten that down maybe half a turn to one turn, and then try it again. But that's, that's good. We're not, we're not sliding out at all. The machine's gripping the wire, and when you pull the trigger, it should Correct. pull it through, Correct. right? Correct. A lot of people make the trouble, and I've seen this when I test welders out when they bring them back. This will be cranked down four or five turns more than needed. And what that does is put too much tension on the drive roller, flattens out your wire a little bit. And if this is set up right and this is set up right, there's no reason that you should have a drive roller problem. So, again, I'm still holding on the wire because I don't want it to unwind. It will unwind on you. Again, smooth side. Kiwi, Kiwi smooth bushing side. on. This is where you set your tension. Just go until it touches. Release this slowly. If you release it and it starts to unwind, go about a half a turn, because it will unwind, because that's still under tension. So I check that roll like, like that. If you want to feel that much tension I have on that. OK, it's not much, but it's, it's You feel it's, it's, it's good and smooth. You hold the wire. Now, that's not going to unwind on me, okay. but it's going to feed smoothly. So there's going to be no drive roller issue there, there whatsoever. Excellent. All right. While we're inside the welder, this switch right here, I've seen people come back. The drive, drive uh, roller doesn't work. Sometimes it's set on spool gun instead of torch. So that's something to know because if you get it home and from the factory that's set on spool gun, you go to trigger it and it's not working, that could be an issue. So... Make sure that's set on torch, and you should be good to go. Excellent. Now, we are running 30 size wire, and today, for our demonstrations, we're going to be using eighth inch, eighth inch sheet metal. Got my sheet metal gauge here. It's eighth inch. And up here in the settings, we go to where eighth inch is. Oh, so that's nice. So for beginners, there's even a chart. And this, this chart is so accurate, it just gets you in the ballpark. It really is really cool. All right, so we go eighth inch. I'm using CO2 argon, the 7525 mix, 30 thousandths wire, so I find that. Come across here, eighth inch, and it says E5 or E6. 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 All right, so for this, we set it at E6. Okay. That's easy enough. Easy enough. Now, if you see that you're not getting penetration, you could always bump it up a little bit on the temperature, mm -hmm. your amperage, or if you're getting too much, this is really comes in play where you're really dialed in when you're doing sheet metal. Okay. This is so awesome, so it's very cool. All right, now, the very first time you run wire through, I take off the nozzle, and I also take off the tip. That way, the, the wire is allowed to come through without hitting this tip at all. And whenever you weld and feed through, you want to make sure that this is not all kinked up and stuff when you're welding. You want that nice, lazy loop in there, okay. straight as possible. Your wire is going to feed nice and smooth. That makes sense. Sure does. All right, our gas is off because we're just feeding wire. Turn the machine on. Thank you, Randall. All right, now we're just going to feed wire. Now, you've got to remember, this wire coming out here is live. It's hot. So don't touch it. Okay. I wonder what the wire spool looks like inside the water while you're doing that. Oh, wow. And also do this sometimes. I check it, make sure that I don't have this too loose. If I'm doing spot welds, because this is how I spot weld, just little bits at a time. You want to make sure that torch has the accuracy yep. of the trigger pull. You want and the sure smoothness, yep. Not... Okay. If this is too loose, you could actually get a backlash in there. Here we go. Here it comes. Right. 
Now, I shut it off, and I always ground it out. There is residual current in this machine. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah, residual. And I'm deathly afraid of electric, and anybody that has attended my class has heard my story. I won't get into that today. Let's feed that piece over. Yep. Now, this comes with your welder when you buy it. And just, that's all you need. Just snug just it up. Just a snug up. This here part, we're going to treat these with anti spatter. What we got here? There you go. Can I have that blue rag then too, please? Yeah, sure. Please. Anti spatter just helps it when you're cleaning up your, your spatters and stuff from the weld. It makes it so it cleans up real easy. It's kind of like a barrier so that any of your spatter doesn't stick. Correct. So it doesn't build up and cause any problems. That and, you know, when you use this, it keeps things working longer. Um, your, your nozzle here can last you a really long time as long as you don't drop the torch. There's a ceramic insulator between the torch and the nozzle exterior. Okay. If you drop it, the ceramic could crack and next thing you know, you're buying another nozzle. The nozzle does not need to be very, very tight. That's it. Now, we have these MIG pliers. If you are tighten up your nozzle too tight, these pliers are great for this. You can loosen it up. And they're also great because they have this hole on the one side that when you put that side towards your nozzle, flat up against, you clip your wire, that's the correct stick out. Oh, wow. Isn't that nifty? Yes. So that's definitely a nice thing to pick <laughs> up, huh? Also, while we're talking about the pliers, these tines, when you get spatter built up in there, they'll go in, and since it's treated with anti-spatter, it'll just pop that right out. And it keeps the shielded gas flowing through there much easier, it keeps us cooler, and you get much better welds that way. You get shielded gas around where you're welding, it's all cool. Right on. All right? And these little guys right here, that little neural part, if you lose this wrench, that'll fit on your tip to take that off. Okay. So these are good things. And um, when you weld, you'll see that you'll get a little ball at the end. And when I'm doing sheet metal, I constantly am clipping that ball off every time I do a spot weld. Mm. So these are, I carry these wherever I go. All right. So any questions on setting it up as far as feeding the wire or anything else? Um, it's pretty straightforward from what, you've, from what you presented so far. Okay, cool. Do we want to... Um, Check with Scott. Did anybody have any questions we'll so far here. on the internet? We certainly had a couple that rolled through here and there, but one more importantly, I'm not sure if I missed it while I was answering questions. Uh, did you guys get a chance to talk about um, that little spacer on the spool and why it's so important? Yes, the plastic one? Yes. We sure did. Okay, good. Well, we we're caught up on that. Other than that, people have just been asking questions uh, on other great tools we have, you know, like our perfect panel prep tool for when you're using it MIG welding. So, uh, but other than that, we'll keep cruising along. Awesome. Excellent. All right. Get back to it, Bob. All right, so we're going to turn the gas on now. And uh, now stay away. Stay away. Safety. Because we don't turn that on. And remember, we turn it on slowly. And once you get on, you turn it all the way open. And then we'll turn the machine on and we'll do a. Why don't we, uh, for the people at home, let's show them what that gauge actually looks like. Okay, you want to turn the machine so on? What, and, and so we what's can, the difference between the left and the right? Okay, this tells you how full the tank is, and that's your cubic feet per hour was going through the torch. Now, if you oh, turn okay. your machine on, you'll see this. When I trigger it, you'll see that gauge move. All right? You got to turn the machine on, right? Yes. Okay, machine's on. All right, now watch that gauge there. And you hear the gas come out. Now, do you want to adjust it while you're pulling the trigger or while you, you want to adjust it while there's gas going through it? Okay. And you can hear there's, our machines are, are set up with like a two second post flow, mm -hmm. which is awesome because after you're done welding, you hold the torch over top of the weld. As the weld cools, shielding gas is coming out, allowing the weld to cool and to be a stronger weld because you're sucking in the CO2 argon hmm. instead of the air, air atmosphere. So we have it set up right where we need it to be. And we're good to go. So uh, let's, get, let's dr quick. drain the current. So a quick interject, a customer asked, just so I get this, the same answer. I mean, I know there's definitely some variance depending on where you're at, if you have any kind of you know breeze in the area. But uh, what exact uh, flow rate do you have it set at? 
or 12, 12 to 15. 12 to 15. Sounds good. And like, like I said earlier too, if you're welding outside where you have to have, um, where you have to weld outside, you can always set up a piece of plywood or something at the other end of your vehicle just to make sure that you're not getting uh, Create a little too barrier. much barrier. Correct. All right, we can move these out of the way now too. Excellent. Excellent. All right, and we don't need any of these. Tuck that All right out there. All right, let's get our gloves on. Gloves on. Now the very first thing I teach is a spot weld. So what we're going to do, we're going to put our ground clamp as close. We have the fortunate ability to have this great table, work table, mm -hmm. and a ground clamp would work well here. If you're doing a car where you're welding on a car, make sure your ground clamp is as close to the welding project as you can. Like okay. you, don't want, you don't want this at the front bumper and you're putting a rear quarter panel on. All right? Fair enough. So that's that part. Um, what we're going to teach you now, of course, a lot of people have never welded before like you. Mm -hmm. You want to come in and just learn to do a spot weld. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to trigger the, the, the wand, the torch. And when you hold it, you want to hold it like a pool cue. Okay. Hand here. Stabilize it. Stabilize it. You want to be at about maybe a 20 degree lean back. Okay. And when we do start doing beads, we're going to be pushing it. That way the gas is in front. So we're up here like that, and since we have the proper amount of stick out, that's the distance we want to be the whole time we're welding. If you get further away or closer, it's, it's going to change your weld. Okay. And so keep when, that consistent. Yep. When we do the bees, I'm going to demonstrate the, dis the difference when we pull back. All right. All right. So for right now, we're just going to do that, and we're going to squeeze the trigger for 1,001, 1,000, and let go. All right. All right. And that's a spot weld. And that's just a spot weld. So let me get my other glasses on. Make sure we're not on grind. 11's pretty good. 11, yep. All right range, OK. Now, the, will this fit around my head? Or yeah, around remember, my, open it Around up. the man bun? <laughs> that's right, we got the man bun there, Joe. <laughs> there we go, tighten it down a little bit. Ready? Ready to rock. All right, so. And we're still set at Wait, E5. E5. Said E6. That's what it said, E6, right? E6. That's right, E6. God, that chart is useful. Yeah, the chart's awesome. Okay, here we go. Now, you see how I held over top after each weld? I did. There's your penetration from the back side. Looks nice. And if our weld was too hot or too cold, you would see a very shallow or very deep part. Okay. So the chart pretty much looks like we set it up pretty nicely. So you definitely want to see that on the back side? Yes. That like burning through look? Well, it's, it, just, it discolors that. And okay. I so that's how you know good there. penetration. Yeah, you can see that. And on sheet metal, you're going to see a little bit of a bump. Okay. All right, good. All right, so you're up. We want to do three spots. My turn. And, yep. Now, there's that little ball I was telling you about at the end. Yeah. So we will send some wire out, drain the residual current, clip the wire. And now you're ready to go. Oh boy, here we go. Let's get comfortable. Yep. And down like a pool cue. And uh, and just go right down to the wire touches, and squeeze for 1,001. Awesome. Wow. Hold right over top of it when you're done, though. Excellent. You can actually hear the shielding gas it's still coming out. Mm -hmm. Great. Do three more. Three more? Yeah. Stay over top. There you go. All 
Oh, that one got away from me a little bit. Very cool. That's our wire brusher down. Wire brusher. Very cool. Nice. Okay, now, this part is where you're going to do a bead. All right. I think I'm ready for it. I think you are. Looks like you've done very, very well, my friend. You see the penetration? Mr. Camera Guy. <laughs> Pick up a few things watching these guys do it. It's fun to actually get your hands dirty, though. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start a, a bead. A bead. And I'm going to do one bead and show you how it's done. And then the second bead I run, I'm going to pull back, and you're going to hear the difference in the sound of the sizzle, if you will. Okay. So you start with your spot weld, just like you did there, 1001, and then you start moving. And you watch your puddle, and you come back, you cut the puddle in half. So it's like that. Or you could go spot, and you could do little C's. Choice is up to you. All right. Can you guys see that over there? So you're not just pushing a line, you're actually, I guess, trying to do some kind of pattern while you do it. Well, little so circles, little or you circles do C's, or C's. Or C's. You guys can see that in there. I'll oh, do it again with the marker. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, so you start with your spot weld, 1001, and then you start moving. You can do C's like this, back and forth, or you could do this. And what is that actually doing? It's laying your metal down. It's a constant feed wire. Mm -hmm. So it's laying your metal down, and it's the size of the bead that you want to create. Okay. And you're always pushing because we have the MIG welder with the gas, and it's pushing the gas out in front first. So you're just trying, basically, I guess, from the sound of it, just create that puddle and keep moving it. Correct. So, okay, that makes sense. Yep. All right, so we're going to get this off of there. You couldn't just weld over it? I could, but I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now first weld is going to be a regular weld, second weld is going to be a, I'm going to pull up real high and you'll be able to hear this. All right. So if you guys are just joining us, we got Bob here. He's uh, demonstrating, or he's giving me a lesson for a first time MIG welder, MIG welding basics. And uh, we're about to lay our first bead. Let me know when you're ready. You get in there, cameraman. Ready? Okay, here we go. Do another one for me? Okay, now this one here, I'm going to pull up on it. Okay. And you'll hear the difference in the sizzle. Well, here, do, uh, do, do that same one again. I, okay. I, I want to get a better look at it. Okay. Clip off the ball. You got it. Okay, ready? Okay. Now I'm going to raise the torch up and you'll hear the difference between those welds and this one I'm going to do. Okay. I'll start out the first little bit will be fine and I'm going to bring her up and you'll hear the difference. Let's get the camera guy in here. It's fun to be on this side to get the boss the camera guy around. Here, get in here camera guy. <laughs> you getting this camera guy? Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go up. 
You hear that difference? I do. Okay, a lot of people will make the mistake when they're starting to weld, they, they won't slide their hand along, they'll do this here. And as they do that, the weld gets thinner and thinner. So, don't do that. Make sure I move the torch along right, with the weld. Right, slide along. Now, go. I've seen on an Eastwood video before, it's actually good to practice even just the movement without actually yes, live welding. Yes, absolutely. Not a bad idea whatsoever. All right. All right, so, got to clip the end. Let me get my other glasses. I noticed it's good to like develop these habits and kind of implement them every time to ensure better welds. Right, if, you get used, if you get used to cutting that bow off when you're, you're just practicing like this, you'll get in that habit and it's really good for you. Right. Get closer. Push closer. Yep. Move a little faster. Hold it. Yep. Towards towards the end there. Look at your wire sticking out now. Oh wow. You're getting way too far away. Like I was telling, sometimes how hot that as is. you go, you're not you're doing more of this instead of sliding. Okay. So that's a common first timer. Did you get that cameraman? Oof. Can I try that again? Oh absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you're not ready to go yet. <laughs> Now, you would want to wire brush that. So wire brush that? Yes. Wire brush it and what should I do differently this time? Keep your torch closer. Torch closer. And you're going way too slow. The size of your puddle is a lot wider than what I have. Yeah. So you want to do your circles, smaller circles, and move faster this way. Okay. And keep your torch a little closer. Keep a constant distance all the way through. All right. You started nice, but then as you went, you slowed up and you went really far away. Okay. I can do better. Okay, cool. No doubt. All right. Let's get the torch already. Okay, hang on right there. You got a little too much angle. Go more vertical. There you go. Is that more? There you go. And now get a little closer. A little closer yet. A little closer. There you go. Now keep that distance all the way through, even a little closer yet as you burn. All right. Ready, camera man? Mm -hmm. Awesome. <laughs> hey, it's straight. <laughs> See the difference? Just those two few little tweaks you made? Yeah. Good job. I'm a welder, Bob. I know, man. Now wait. You want to run another one before we go to your T-joint? Sure. Cool. See this the important thing is keep your angle, your distance, and as you slide your hands, you're going to be able to keep that same distance all the way through. Okay. All right? That's important. That's key. Got the penetration. Great penetration, yeah. All right. Let's try this again. Clip it off. Should I let her rip? Get closer. Yep. <laughs> common mistake. Everybody wants to look at their weld as soon as they're done. Keep, I, their I keep, torch. Pull, I keep yes. pulling the torch away. <laughs> That's a common mistake. It looks great. Thanks. Very, very good. Very cool. That weld is worthy of the camera to see that one. Which one did I 
did he start on? <laughs> that one there. Can we say that? Yeah, so as you guys can see, I started off here, was, uh, started out okay, and I guess I started, and I wasn't moving fast enough, right? And you were too far away. And too far away. So then it kind of got real wide and kind of crappy looking. Second attempt right here, a little bit better. I guess a little more uniform. Yep, much better. But uh, probably still maybe a little too far away. You can probably still work on technique a little bit. And then my last one. Much smoother. A little smoother. I was definitely. Yeah, here, here you look like you were going at one speed and then you speed, you slowed down here. This here, you were a lot more constant on that one. Yeah, I, mean, I, I'm, I, I can recognize I feel a little more comfortable yeah, with it yeah. the more I practice. And yeah, it kind of well, makes sense, right? Cool, yeah, <laughs> very good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to weld a T-joint. All right, well, before we move on to the T-joint, if you guys are just joining in, I'm Joe here with Bob. He's teaching me MIG welding basics. I'm a beginner. He's, he, he's already, he's walked me from setting up my machine to laying a spot weld to laying my first bead. And we're about to move on to doing a T-joint. So before we move on to that, though, let's cut over to Scott and see uh, if any, any questions have come in. Yep, we're cruising through. We've had a couple come in where um, they just tuned in. They're looking to see what the actual flow rate was set on that machine uh, to properly shield your weld. Okay, and it's what? you uh, 12, 12 to 15 cubic feet per hour. Cubic feet per and hour. That's, that's on the red scale. Right, there's two graphs on that gauge to so make sure you are reading the inner red one. The outer one is an LPH, and you don't want to go by that. You'll wind up using way too much shielding gas. That is correct. So, <laughs> Other than that, though, let's get back over to Joe Welding. What do you right. think, Scott? Am I natural or what? I think you're doing pretty well, and people love seeing you on camera. Oh, uh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Uh, is, is that what the, the, the comments are saying? Yeah, we're getting lots of good people feedback. People like to see the ground up. You know, we've had a lot of people mention that. Awesome, this, awesome. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now, I'm not going to weld this. You are. Okay. Yeah, you, this is all you. So on a T-joint, You can use this magnet to get your 90 degree set. Okay. Okay. And just remember when you put your tack on there. So the magnet's going to hold it while I just run the bead? No, no, no. <laughs> We're going to tack it first. All right. So you'll, t you'll set this up however you want it. If you want it, whatever you want. All right. Mm -hmm. Make sure this is down square, the magnet's on, and you'll put a tack here on this side and then a tack on the other side. Okay. Okay. Just to get the lock in place for yep. the time being. And then we're going to wire brush it and then we'll see how well you weld it. All right. Right before he starts welding, I'll quick jump in with one more that just came in. I thought it'd be a really great time to throw down. Uh, somebody asked what angle you're actually holding the torch at. About 20 degrees. Let's see if you can, you know, if you Fair can, enough. If, you can, if you can demonstrate that real quick. So if this is a uh, camera, I can get in here. So at 20 degrees is going to be roughly about, about there. Like that. Yep, about 20. Not like this. That's correct. Not straight up and down, but just a slight off angle off of 90. And a common practice, like I said earlier, a common practice is when you do start welding, they, ha they start out like this, and instead of sliding their hand, they'll go like that, and then the angle becomes greater, and next thing you know, your shielded gas is going off into Never Never Land. So you want to keep that angle about 20 degrees, watch your welder, and watch your pull, and you just go from there. Cool. Keep it consistent, right? Correct. Consistent, consistent. Is that 20 degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit? And uh, if you're wondering, that's not Celsius, it's 20 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> I'm just kidding, you guys. All right. It's a lame joke, but that's expected. Hey. All right. It's what we do. So tack it in? Sure. If you're good to go, tack one corner. I think and I'm good. Cool. I like doing this. Cool. That is a tack weld. It's like a second. Just like you did a very spot weld. Oh boy. Something went wrong. What went wrong? I think you were you were right. not you were not near near where you'd be and I think with all the spatter we have a ground issue. Okay, okay. Maybe we should clamp them down, Joe. That's a good idea. Do we have clamps? I know we have clamps. First piece clamped in place. Put it 
thing. There you go. Good enough for me. And get right in the, you want to hit it right in that angle, the right 45, in the, right in the 45. Cool. Now the other side, you said? Yeah, spin around. The opposite corner? Yes. If not, the heat's going to pull the piece over way too much because the metal always wants to come towards the heat. Okay. So now we tack the opposite side on the opposite, opposite side, opposite side. Put your C-clamp on. Easy for you to say. Yeah. Put your C-clamp on. C-clamp on? For the ground. Ready, Bob? Go. I keep forgetting. I keep you, pulling away. Yes, I'm so do. excited to look yes, at you it. you do. All right, so now so what I would do is wire brush this down on the other side. Okay. Actually, you know what? It looks like it's leaning a little bit that side, so you can weld it on this side. That would help bring it over, yep. Position my clamp a little bit. And when I do a weld from the angle joint here, what I do is I will bring the puddle, I do a clockwise motion with my torch. I bring the puddle up. Okay. So you start there and then you do your spot, everything with your spot weld. So 1001, mm -hmm. and then you start, you want 45, you want 50% up and 50% on the floor. So okay. you just do your circles like that. So, so uh, camera, I can get in here. So but I guess what you're saying, you want to make sure you're welding as much on this piece as that piece, Correct. so they both, I guess, like melt and fuse evenly. Yep. yep. So what you do is you start here right in the center, you go 1001, and then you start your circles. Okay. And I always pull the weld up from the bottom. And I'm making sure that I'm equally distance on the top as I am on the bottom. Right. And as I keep going, and you'll see it as you grow, it'll keep going and just keep ahead of the puddle. Okay. And do the whole run? Do the whole run. All unless right. I tell you to stop. But you're under control right now, sir. Oh, the whole piece? Let's make sure you guys can see this. Let's get it over here. Thank you, Bob. Yep. Sure, cameraman Joe. You ready for it? All right. All right, set the hand up. Practice my movement. All right, I think I can do this. Remember your angle. Make sure my angle's in there. You ready to rock? All right. All right, real time. And held it over the top. Way to go, man. Look at that weld. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> I say we end on that. Are you okay <laughs> with him not doing circles? Yeah. What technique did you use, Joe? I used more of the, uh, the C technique yep. that we sh yes. they showed me. And that's fine. I, I feel a little more comfortable with that than doing like the, the kind of loop technique. That C seems to be a little easier for me. So let's. The this guy's a little hot. But let's make sure the camera and you guys at home can see that right there. Let's get out here in front of you. Is that a good place for you? Wow, my hand was getting a little hot. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's and fun. We should show them the back side with the penetration so you can see where the penetrated from the back side on your vertical and your horizontal side. Oh, nice. So you did split the difference. Excellent. Very good. Very good job, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Take a look at the back side. Yeah, let's take a look at the back side right here. You can see the penetration, the discoloration. And if you want to angle it down and see the floor on the bottom of it. Let's see the bottom of it like that. 
There you go. Oh, wow. Try to hold this stuff for the camera, man. You getting this camera guy? Randy's not used to being the camera guy. Yeah, that's the problem <laughs> right here. Excellent, cool. All righty. Well, that was well, easy enough. That's, that's it. She should, did well, my should, man. Should we wrap it up? I think that's a wrap. All right, guys, if you're just catching up, Joe here in the Eastwood Garage. Got Bob teaching me how to lay my first MIG weld. Uh, as you can see, if you, if you missed anything, you guys can always watch it recorded. You can uh, watch it from the beginning, see how we set the machine up. And uh, I guess while we're at it, let's check with Scott real quick. See if we see if we have any last minute questions, Scott. We're good on questions. Everybody loved your your teaching, Bob. You were a big hit and uh, good to go. They said to put a little lube on your helmet though; it squeaks. <laughs> but other than that, everybody <laughs> loved your instructions. So it definitely lube up your helped helmet. them out. And anyone who's just tuning in, like Joe said, make sure you go back. You can catch this whole video. It'll be up on YouTube later. It'll be on Facebook. You'll be able to watch it anytime you want. Excellent. So we're good to go. Cool. Well, like we said, be sure if you want to catch future videos, we'll be showing you guys more how-to, more MIG welding basics, more TIG welding basics, as well as more advanced classes. And maybe, uh, maybe I'll make an appearance again. You can show me how to do a little more advanced techniques. That'd be cool. Excellent. Cool. I'm going to stay here and practice a little bit more. Thank you guys for joining us. Cool. All right. So, so what you want to do then next time?